What is packing with you, YouTube? KHTV with another video. Um, first and foremost, I would like to say happy birthday to me. I just turned 39 years old. Um, the sad part about this day is that I'm usually working on my birthday, so I'm working right now and I am up in San Francisco taking care of some last business before I fly back down to uh, L.A. and start my bir birthday weekend at a resort in San Diego with the Miss Lovely Chica. Can't wait to see you, baby. But that's why we're not here. Um, happy New Year to all Packer fans. Um, I would like to send my condolences to everybody that has lost somebody to COVID-19. This has been a challenging year for some people. I lost two people this year to COVID-19. Um, so yeah, rest in peace to all of the people that died, all of the fallen soldiers of 2020. Rest in peace to Kobe Bryant. The best basketball player I ever witnessed play the game of basketball. Um, you will never be forgotten in the hearts of Laker fans. Uh, and, you know, 2020 has been a good year for me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, just reflecting on this year in general. Um, I made some small investments that paid off uh pretty good for me um and it was nice to see those uh those bonuses show up at the end of this year <laughs> so with that being said man let's get ready pull ourselves together and take on the challenges of 2021 um if you haven't heard the news, I'm pretty sure every Packer fan has heard the news about David Bakhtiari, the highest paid left tackle in football for the greatest football team in sports history, the Green Bay Packers, tore his ACL and will be out and will be out for the remainder of the season. Um, prayers up for him. Um, the good thing is. Well, I'm not going to say the good thing, but on the bright side of things, we do have enough confidence in our guys that we can boister that side of the offensive line with Elton Jenkins, who I think will be a stud at that position. Um, we have Corey Lindsley back, so I think the offensive line will be OK. We have Jake Steinberger is back. And, of course, Mercedes Lewis. Um, but one of the biggest, I wouldn't say biggest, but one of the good things that came into this week was that the Packers signed Damon Harrison, a.k.a. Snack Harris. Um, I talked about this earlier this year, about the Green Bay Packers potentially going after him where when we were <clears throat> fans of, a, you know, fans were caught up in the whole Everson Griffin situation and we quickly learned why we didn't sign that guy because he has a loser mentality by going over there to support and help out the Cowardly Lions not be successful for another season <clears throat> so we bring in Snack Harrison um you know he played with the we do should we call them New York Jets or should we call them the New Jersey Jets? I want to call I'm gonna call them the New Jersey Jets. Um drafted by them, left. He also went to experience what Everson Griffin is experiencing right now by you know loser loser mentalityism um by joining the Detroit Lions. Um he finally Goes to a winning and successful team like the Seattle Seahawks. They don't quite use him right. He only played six games. Didn't start any of those six games. But somehow found a way to pick up, I think, not six or nine tackles and a forced fumble. 
Now, I think in 2017 or 2018, Snack Harris Harrison hit the NFL top 100 players list, ranked at number 96. That same year, Mike Daniels was ranked 84th. So bringing him in now, <clears throat> I think, is a good thing. Going into the playoffs, knowing we have to play the Bears the last game of the season, and we'll get into that. Um, <clears throat> but for him to join the Packers now after leaving the Seattle Seahawks, who for some odd as reason didn't need him as much as they thought they did, and PFF Pro Football Focus, <laughs> they ranked him as the eighth best defensive lineman against the run which I think will help Kenny Clark, who tweeted out that he's ready to rock and roll with snacks. Um, and we all know when Kenny Clark has the help he needs, he's one of, one of he, I, I want to say last year, he was one of the best defensive linemen at having tackles for loss. And it would be nice to see Kenny Clark doing that again, you know, after, you know, dealing with some injuries um, last year, um, and he finally got paid. So I think this is going to be a big, big, big help for him. Um, of course we have, uh, Kiki Kingsley on, on, all, on the defensive line, along with Rashawn Gary had, who has shown major, major, major upside this year. I've, I love everything that I've seen from Rashawn Gary. Um, very physical, very disruptive defensive lineman, which I think is going to really, really help him out too. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing Rashawn Gary and Kenny Clark be a force to be reckoned with um, going into the postseason. Um, and, and of course, this this aids Preston Smith, who I kind of been shitting on this year. But come on, Preston, we paying you a lot of money, bro. Paying you a lot of money, and that 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 bull rush is getting tired i'm tired of seeing the same bull rush move um so maybe this will help preston smith's production um i'm loving everything about this defense especially when we shown some testicular fortitude against the run last week God damn it man these people calling me against the run last week um facing off against derrick henry um Holding him to 98 rushing yards uh, last week, facing off against the Titans. So, and, you know, a lot of people were saying that Snack Harris wouldn't be able to play this week. But Matt LaFleur didn't rule that out. They are quickly trying to get uh, Snacks acclimated and brought up to speed on the defensive scheme. They say he's one of the quickest learners of a defensive scheme in football. And I think he's going to play. I think he's going to play, especially with first round seed implications on the line to uh, have the playoffs run through Green Bay. Um, now let's get into this Bears game. And a lot of Packer fans seem to think that this game is going to be in the bag. Um, I think this is this is a like Matt Lafleur said. This is a playoff game. All hands will be on deck for this game, which I like. I like this. I like this a lot. This raises up the level of uh, of the competitive nature that the Green Bay Packers will have to bring in this game to make sure that you know the playoffs has to come through the frozen tundra. You know, there's all these scenarios of what can possibly happen if the Green Bay Packers lose to the Bears. It's a road game. Um, you know, people say, oh, Mitch Trubisky this, Mitch Trubisky that. I'm pretty sure Mitch Trubisky is doing his fucking homework right now, figuring out a way to run through this to run through this Green Bay defense. I'm pretty sure he's going to run the ball out of the pocket a lot to move the chains. So we have to be prepared for that. Mike Pettin has to be prepared for that. And the offense has to do their job. 
we have to block for Aaron Rodgers. Not having David Bakhtiari out there on the field is going to raise the antenna of Rokon Smith and Khalil Mack and all those dudes over there. Uh, uh, Danny Trevathan, they're going to be licking their chops to try to beat the Green Bay Packers. And <laughs> why wouldn't we want to have it any other way? Why wouldn't we want to have it any other way than going against our division rival who has shown some upside these last three weeks by putting up over 30 plus points a game? Been finding a way to win. Now, some people may say, oh, the Chicago Bears didn't really play anybody. They playing all of these teams that are uh, ranked low in defense and that doesn't matter. A win is a win. Even though it does nothing for you competitively. But let's not say that the Bears don't have a huge task on their plate. They have to go out there and beat the number one seed in the NFC. Now. This game is going to be a good game, and it's just so funny to me how the NFL does the Green Bay Packers. Anytime we have a big game, they have to flex the time. Oh, flex it. Let's flex it. I do not understand that. The only team that happens to is the Green Bay Packers. Anytime we have to play a crucial game where it means something, they want to flex it. Uh, let's flex it. Let's Flex it. Flex the time. I don't understand that shit. I do not understand that shit. I believe this game is going to be a wacky game. It's going to be a wild game. Um, and the Packers can't go out here making mistakes. Um, we're going to need everybody to go into this game healthy. And we're going to need everybody to leave this game healthy. That's going to be very important going into the playoffs um i'm what i would love to see happen is that the packers go out here whoop on a monkey ass blow them out early take them out of the game and where aaron Rodgers don't got to play in the fourth quarter that's what i want to see i don't want to see none of the starters playing in the fourth quarter on defense and offense and let's not be let's not be naive Let's not be naive to not think that the Packers are going to be licking their chops, too, to get after Mitchell Trubisky. We already know Zadarius Smith is coming up close on closing in on his season high sack. His career sacks. I think he had 13 and a half last year, and I'm, I'm pretty sure he's going to go balls out to try to break that. And I want to see it happen. I want to see Aaron Rodgers throw three more touchdowns, possibly four. And get this game out of the way, man. Um, I don't see anything offensively that the Bears have better better going against our defense. And I don't see anything on their defense that can slow down our offense. We just can't make mistakes. That's the thing that the Packers cannot do. We can't go into this game making small, stupid mistakes. So, with that being said, man, I'm not going to do a prediction video for this week um like i said i'm gonna be in san diego um with miss chica <laughs> i'm gonna be out there with miss chica the lovely lady that has entered my life in the last few months of uh 2020 and i'm looking forward to uh starting something beautiful with this woman you know i gotta stop it's time to um, get out of my having a bunch of women around days. You know, the juggling act is getting old. But enough of that. Shout out to all of the Packer fans. Shout out to all of the Packer content creators. There's so many of y'all to name, but y'all know who y'all are. Shout out to all of my subscribers. Shout out to the subscribers that participate in the comments. Terry, Adam James. Thank you guys uh, so much. E even the ones that I can't I can't name right now. Um, 
thank y'all, man. Oh, shout out to you, Grid. You know what I'm saying? It, this was a blast this year interacting with you um, on your channel. Um, I look forward to um, doing that with a few other uh, content creators. Uh, shout out to Philly 500. Uh, shout out to Shango, Dallas Cowboy Show. <clears throat> shout out to uh, uh, Pac-Man Jake. You know, those content creators that acknowledge me, I appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? Y'all don't have to do any of that grid. You know what I'm saying? You always shout me out, man. I really appreciate that. Desert Eagle 90, EDP, my boy. You know what I'm saying? Your gun collection getting crazy. But you, my nigga, man, shout out to you. Um, <clears throat> who else, man? It's a lot of people out there in the uh, YouTube sphere, YouTube sphere that um, I watch. Sledge Daddy TV, huge Bears fan. Shout out to him. Um, and I'm, I might as well say this. I might as well say this since Terry always bringing it up. <laughs> uh, shout out to Ticket TV for him being the worst YouTuber on YouTube. Shout out to you. So with that being said, man, happy new year. Um, to all of y'all, man, who watched this video. And um, let's rock and roll in 2020, man. I'm looking forward to it. With that being said, go pack, go.